And is it merely a coincidence that the Pentagon was hit in the only section that was renovated to withstand that very same kind of attack? And that Donald Rumsfeld was safe in his office on the opposite end of the building? If the government has nothing to hide, why are they so afraid to answer a few questions or release a few videos? Nine fifty nine, New York City, New York. The South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses to the ground in approximately ten seconds. Twenty nine minutes later, the North Tower follows suit, collapsing in approximately ten seconds. Later that evening at five twenty, World Trade Center seven, a forty seven story office building three hundred feet away from the North Tower, suddenly collapses. The building's tenants included the CIA. Department of Defense, IRS, Secret Service, and Rudy Giuliani's emergency bunker. And, the SEC was using it to store three to 4,000 files related to numerous Wall Street investigations. Although every single building surrounding Building 7 stood intact, it fell straight down into a convenient little pile in six seconds. Official explanation? Falling debris from the Twin Towers created an internal fire which ignited several fuel tanks inside the building. If this is true, then it would be the third building in history to collapse because of a fire. The first two would be the Twin Towers. On July 28, 1945, a B-52 bomber lost in the fog crashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building. Fourteen people dead, one million dollars in damage, but the building stands intact to this day. On February 14, 1975, a three-alarm fire broke out between the 9th and 14th floors of the North Tower. According to the New York Times, the fire leads to intense scrutiny of the towers and eventually to a decision to install sprinklers. On May 4, 1988, a 62-story skyscraper in Los Angeles burned for three hours and spread over four floors. It did not collapse. On February 23, 1991, a 38-story skyscraper in Philadelphia, built in 1973, burned for more than 19 hours and spread over eight floors. It did not collapse. On October 17, 2004, a 56-story skyscraper in Venezuela, built in 1976, burned for over 17 hours and spread over 26 floors, eventually reaching the roof. Guess what? It did not collapse. On February 12, 2005, the Windsor Building in Madrid, a 32-story tower framed in steel-reinforced concrete, burned for almost 24 hours, completely eradicating the upper 10 stories of the building. Although the top 10 floors of the building fell, the building itself did not collapse. And yet, on September 11, 2001, two 110-story skyscrapers, completed in 1973, burned for 56 and 103 minutes, respectively, over four floors, before collapsing completely to the ground. One might argue that this was due to the construction of the World Trade Center. Let's look at what was inside those buildings. The Twin Towers were composed of 200,000 tons of steel, 425,000 cubic yards of concrete, 103 elevators, 43,600 windows, 60,000 tons of cooling equipment, and a 360-foot television antenna. The core of each tower was 87 by 133 feet, comprised of 47 box columns 36 by 16 inches thick. The North Tower was completed in 1970, standing at 1,368 feet tall, and the South Tower was completed in 1973, clocking in at 1,362 feet tall making them the tallest buildings in the world until the Sears Tower was completed in 1974. And to think, the government would have us believe that these massive structures were destroyed by 10,000 gallons of jet fuel. However, eyewitnesses, video footage, and a little common sense quickly refutes that claim.
The second plane hits the south tower between the 78th and 82nd floors at 9.03 a.m. Barely hitting the southeast corner. The majority of the jet fuel exploding outside in a massive fireball. Yet, this tower collapses first, even though the north tower was hit straight on and had already been burning for 18 minutes longer. Galileo's Law of Falling Bodies calculates the time in which an object will travel a certain distance in complete freefall. Distance, d, equals 16.8 times time in seconds squared. The south tower was 1,362 feet tall. 1362 equals 16.08 times 84.7, or 9.2 seconds. The Twin Towers came down in nearly free fall speed. 200,000 tons of steel shatters into sections no longer than a couple feet long. 425,000 cubic yards of concrete is pulverized into dust. Thousands of lives are extinguished instantly. So what brought down the World Trade Center? Let's ask the experts. Van Romero, Vice President for Research at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. My opinion is, based on the videotapes, after the airplanes hit the World Trade Center, there were some explosive devices inside that caused the towers to collapse. The collapses were too methodical to be a chance result of airplanes colliding with the structures. Ten days later, certainly the fire is what caused the building to fail. Why would Romero change his mind so suddenly? Hyman Brown, civil engineering professor and the World Trade Center's construction manager. It was over-designed to withstand almost anything, including hurricanes, high winds, bombings, and an airplane hitting it. Although the buildings were designed to withstand a 150-year storm and the impact of a Boeing 707, jet fuel burning at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit weakened the steel. Kevin Ryan, Underwriters Laboratories, the company that certified the steel that was used in the World Trade Center, in a letter to Frank Gale of the National Institute of Standards and Technology. We know that the steel components were certified to ASTM E119. The time temperature curves for this standard required the samples to be exposed to temperatures around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours, and as we all agree, the steel applied met those specifications. Additionally, I think we can all agree that even unfireproof steel will not melt until reaching red-hot temperatures of nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Why Dr. Brown would imply that 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit would melt the high-grade steel used in those buildings makes no sense at all. This story just does not add up. If steel from those buildings did soften or melt, I'm sure we can all agree that this was certainly not due to jet fuel fires of any kind, let alone the briefly burning fires in those towers. Ryan's statements directly contradict statements from so-called experts, which claim that 2,000 degree heat inside the World Trade Center caused the towers to collapse. Days after writing this letter, Kevin Ryan was fired from his position. Not even the experts agree with each other. So what else could have caused the Twin Towers and Building 7 to collapse? 10 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, just collapsing on itself. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. We have no idea what caused this. Almost looks like one of those planned implosions. As if a demolition team set off, when you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it My pulled God. it down on itself and it is My not God. there anymore. If you wish to bring uh, anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the, at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. Uh, we heard another explosion, and I'm assuming that's the one that came from the, the lower level, since there were two, and I thought, Right, because it was like 18 minutes apart. Well, this is, the, no, the first, the first explosion, and there was a second explosion in the same building. Okay. There were two explosions. Okay. There. Federal agencies that were down there do believe that there was some sort of explosive device somewhere else besides the planes hitting. NBC's Pat Dawson is close to the scene of that attack, Pat. Uh, just moments ago, uh, I spoke to the chief of safety for the New York City Fire Department, um, Chief Albert Turry. We received word of the possibility of a secondary device, that is another bomb going off. Uh, he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place. And then an hour after the first hit here, with the first 
crash that took place, he said. Uh, there was another explosion that took place uh, in one of the towers here. He thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. The second device, he thinks, he speculates, was probably planted in the building. There were two or three similar huge explosions, and the building uh, literally shook. You literally shook at the base of this building. First one and then the other. Some say after secondary explosions. When a, a big explosion happened, all of a sudden the elevator blew up, smoke. I dragged the guy out, his skin was hanging off, and I dragged him out and I helped him out of the, out of, to the ambulance. Walking down the stairs, we made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. Just get out of the tunnel and the, and the blue. The so subway back. tunnel? Yeah. Tell us what's happening out there. Oh we just gosh. witnessed oh some kind of secondary uh, follow-up explosion on the oh World Trade, Trade Center oh number two. The one secondary. Is... We understand now there has been a secondary explosion on Tower Two. There was another major explosion. The build, the building itself, literally the top of it came down, sending smoke and debris everywhere. Collapse. Five blocks from the World Trade Center, and and we were standing here when when there was some sort of collapse or explosion do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse to me it sounded like it, it to me it sounded like an explosion when i try to say people in a moment we heard a big explosion coming down everything just went black everything came down glass stopped popping and people got hurt stuff went on top of them and it was a big explosion and everything got dark real dark like snow the FBI is here, as you can see. They had roped this area off. They were taking photographs and securing this area just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. Coming over our radio. Get out of the area. The second tower is coming down. They tell you the second tower is Yes, it's about to collapse. At 10.30, I tried to leave the building. But as soon as I got outside, I heard a second explosion and another rumble and more smoke and more dust. I ran inside the buildings. The chandelier shook. And again, black smoke filled the air. Within another five minutes, we were covered again with more silt and more dust. And then a fire marshal came in and said we had to leave because if there was a third explosion, this building might not last. We uh, just saw that as well. The second tower, the only one that was standing, tower number one, just uh, we saw some kind of explosion, a lot of smoke come out of the top of the tower, and then uh, it collapsed down onto the streets below. David Lee, what can you tell us? John, just seconds ago there was a huge explosion and it appears right now the second World Trade Tower has just collapsed. One eyewitness was standing among a crowd of people on Church Street, two and a half blocks from the South Tower, when he saw a number of brief light sources being emitted from inside the building between floors 10 and 15. He saw about six of these flashes, accompanied by a crackling sound before the tower collapsed. Ginny Carr was attending a business meeting on the 36th floor of One Liberty Plaza, across the street from the World Trade Center, and caught the entire first attack on tape. A second explosion can be heard nine seconds after the crash. So what happened in the North Tower? Ask Willie Rodriguez. Willie, a janitor who worked in the World Trade Center for 20 years, was in sub-level one when the North Tower was hit. And all of a sudden we hear BOOM! I thought it was a generator that blew up on the basement. And I said to myself, oh my God, I think it's a generator. And I was going to verbalize it. When I finished saying that in my mind, I hear BOOM! Right on the top, pretty far away. So it was a difference between coming from the basement and coming from the top. And that's, everybody started screaming. And a person comes running into the office saying, explosion, explosion, explosion. He got his hand extended, and all the skin was pulled from his, under, under his arm, all the way to the top of the fingertips, and it was hanging on both arms. Hanging and hanging. And then I look at his face, and he was missing parts of his face. And I said, what happened, what happened? And he said, the elevators, the elevators. And then when I, there were many explosions, and when I actually talk about those explosions, they said that, well, there's, there were so many kitchens in the building, and they have probably those gas can canisters. And I said, I don't believe that, because the building was a class A building. They have very strict guidelines 
but what you can put in a kitchen. And I, I, I really doubt it was gas. So there was a lot of uh, misconceptions of what 